You're live. Hey, everybody. How are you? Um, my name's Cliff Hausner. I'm with Profoto. Um, I, it's been a long time since I've done an event at Adorama, probably about four to five years. So I haven't done anything live here in at least that long. Um, so I am a little bit nervous uh, for a couple of reasons, because Seth makes me nervous. That's number one. Everybody here knows Seth from Adorama. Uh, this is Trupal. Yay, Seth from Adorama. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is Trupal. He works with me, and um, he's a great photographer in his own right. Uh, Trupal Pandy, you should look up his, uh, his Instagram. And this is Ken, who will be our model for today. She works with Wilhelmina, so if you like what you see, um, you can contact Wilhelmina and, and hire her as a model. So what we're going to be doing today is be talking about... Can you hear me okay? No. Yes. Yes, yeah, you guys can hear me okay? Can you hear me? You want a little louder? Yeah. Okay, now they can hear me. Because I don't have a big enough voice. I'm going to do my thing because I, I have a very, you know, I'm very quiet. Um, so what I'm going to be doing today is talking about what lights um, that we have and what lights we are using for the portrait setup that's behind us. Um, we're also going to be talking about um, how, to, how to use these lights, um, why, why we use these lights and different ways that we can. And we're also going to be talking about uh, specials that we have on these lights. So we have a bunch of different kinds of... Uh, um, specials that we're going to be talking about, demo specials, demo day specials. Um, so I'm going to quickly go through the lights with you, explain to you um, what they are and how they work, and then we're going to move to the set, and then I'm going to describe to you exactly how the setup is and why we've set it up that way. We're going to talk about each light and what each light is doing. Um, we probably have way more lights here than we need, but <laughs> since, since uh, it was driving Seth crazy that we put up more lights than we needed, I can't, I, every time he got annoyed, I put up another light. So, just to let you know. So if anybody here knows Seth, he gets annoyed at those kinds of things. So first I'd like to talk to you about the um, B10X and the B10X Plus. So the first light I'm going to show you is the B10X Plus, which is this light. It's a 500 watt second light. Um, the beauty of this light is it's a battery powered light. This is the battery that comes along with it. Um, you can swap out the battery in the middle, you can charge the battery separately, or you can charge the battery and have it charging while you're shooting. So it makes it an exceptional light for both shooting. Um, it has both continuous light in it and strobe. So let me, it, it works better when you turn it on, not always, but so, um, so it fires as a flash. Okay. And it also can work as a continuous light and has color temperature control from 3,000 to 6,500 degrees Kelvin. So if you decide that you want to use it for continuous light, you can. If you want to use it as strobe, you can as well. You can also use it, as I said, plugged in, or you can use it battery only. So the beauty is that you can go on, on location with it and shoot with it, and you could be charging your batteries in your car if you wanted to, um, and use it that way. This is 500 watt seconds, and this is the same light. This is the plus version, and this is the X version. Uh, the B10X without the plus. This means that it's 250 watt seconds. It weighs about three and a half pounds. This weighs about four and a half pounds. Very lightweight, portable, easy to use. So uh, lots of times I'll, when I, even if I do have to plug in, I'll bring these lights with me and use them as plug-in lights. Um, and, and then sometimes I'll go out on location and grab the light and run out and do a shoot outside with it. Right? So I'll be on location. I'll go and shoot with this on location as well as shooting it with inside. inside. Um, one of the things that you're going to notice about most Profoto lights is the majority of them, um, you're able to fit the, um, all of our adapters and all of our um, gels and everything on this, uh, and they're all the same size. So if you go from our Pro 11 pack and our Pro 11 head, um, all of the uh, sizes of the heads are exactly the same. So all of our reflectors um, and all of the things that we have will all work on all the lights. Um, some of the ones um, that are only to be used with continuous lights in them that have LED lights and some are made to be used with lights that are continuous lights that are halogen lights. Those are much brighter so they take a lot more heat. Okay, so uh, I'm going to quickly show you how some of this works here. Again, B10X, B10X Plus, and I just want to show you some quick things that we have. One of the th reasons that I like using these lights, and I've been shooting with Profoto for about 45 years, one of the reasons I like it is because it's simple. I want to change, a, I want to change a, um, a filter. I could just pop that in, pop it out. I can even stack them. I can put extra filters on top of it. Um, they're all stackable and they're all magnetically attached. And uh, you can even attach a grid to the front of this, right? So you can attach a grid. And if, as soon as I pop it off, you'll see on these lights, we have them all set up with, uh, with gels on them, all kinds of different gels. Uh, and it works beautifully because if, I, if we decide that in, in the middle of the shoot, we want to change the look of the light, we want to change the coloring. 
Easy, simple to do. All right, so B10X plus, B10X, 250 watt seconds, 500 watt seconds. Again, the di anybody here, you guys know the difference between 250 watt seconds and, and 500 watt seconds. It really is only one f-stop difference of light, right? So it's one ISO bump up. So between, uh, between this light and this light, there's only one f-stop difference between the two. The size is much bigger. You're gonna get out of this light, you're gonna get about 200 flashes at full power. And in the thousands of flashes as you turn the power down. And the same thing, we lose anybody? No, everybody's okay back there, right? Okay. So with this light, we're gonna have, we get about uh, 400 flashes at full power. So um, both of these, again, when they're plugged in, they're gonna just run forever, and the continuous lights on them can run pretty much full time. All right, any questions? Anybody have any questions? If anybody has any questions online, I can't read it, but if you let me know, that would be awesome. Okay, cool. All right, so the next light we're gonna be talking about is the A2. Wow, I almost forgot the name of this light. That was really hard. So the, a the A2 is a small, lightweight, compact light. Um, I've traveled with these recently. Uh, they came out about a year ago, maybe a little bit more. Um, they are uh, small, lightweight, compact, but the beauty of these lights is how simple and lightweight and portable they are. Uh, these do not plug in. They are using a one lithium ion battery. Um, it's the same one as used in the A10 light, right? So the A10 and the A2. The A10 is made to be used off camera. Uh, we do have a lot of accessories for these lights, and they do have the same click adapters uh, and the same gel adapters, also just magnetically attached directly to the light. So any one of our filters, um, any one of our gels, we can put on here, as well as, um, wow, it's hard to get off because it's made to, uh, made to attach quickly. Um, what else? What else am I looking for? I was looking for another gel. It's okay. So uh, the click box. So one of the other things I'm going to show you, sorry, I'm not supposed to walk out of frame. Seth is going to yell at me. You can do whatever you want, Cliff. Okay, thanks. So one of the other things I'm going to show you is how quickly and easy it is to set up a softbox for this. We have a click softbox, which can attach to the, magnetically attaches. It sets up easily, breaks down easily, and you're able to use it. So in, in lots of setups, now I can travel with four or five of these lights, a couple of click boxes, a couple of grids and gels, and I can literally go out and do a portrait shoot without a problem. Here we've chosen to use the bigger lights, right? Because we, we need to cover a little bit more space. But in 90% of the time, you can go out and, and shoot location portraits. You can probably use this on location. Somebody, somebody have a question up there? Ab says hello. Hi, hi Ab. You guys know Ab? Ab Cisse? Ab Cisse. One of my, one of my favorite guys. Yep. He's usually busting my balls, but right now he's not here to do that. Um, also, I just wanted to show you that the, the size of, the, so the only, these sizes are the same in terms of fitting our reflectors and our lights on it. This one accepts the smaller lights, uh, the smaller uh, um, accessories, and these, this and this accept the same size accessories. So these two accept the same, all the other ones, the B10 and the B10X Plus, um, all accept it. So again, gels popping on, popping off, and they can go on here as well. All right. So. Uh, let me just show you quickly also, we also have on sale here as uh, the uh, soft boxes. All of the OCF soft boxes are on sale. Um, they're, I, I don't know what the discount is on all of them, but I think some of them are 30 to 40% off, as well as, the, um, uh, as well as the speed ring. So super easy to use. They're lightweight, they're portable. That's why they're called OCF. It stands for off-camera flash. So these fit on this light. It will fit on this light or any of our um, uh, other lights that have the same sizing. Any questions so far? No? No, no, no. So um, what I'd like to do first is, uh, if you can pop, oh, you popped it up, great, thank you. So the discount on these lights is, and this is the Home Shopping Network part of this. As soon as I'm done, we're gonna get into really how, I, how we use these lights. He's gonna actually shoot, I promise. I promise. I promise. Well, I, I eventually I will. <laughs> so um, what we have is these two lights are, um, uh, by Profoto is there's $300 off buying each one individually. If you buy a two-head kit, you get $600 off of it. In addition, um, Adorama is adding an additional 5% off on these lights as well. So just for the crowd here and the people online who, who see it. And uh, if you go, where do, where do we have to look to find the, uh, the link to it? So the link to anything Cliff is talking about is in the description of this video. So if you're watching live, check the description. If you're watching back, it's down there as well. Okay, thanks. So, um, so the, and these lights, this one and the A10, the A2 and the A10 are 10% off. Okay, so we have those specials for you. There's and as I mentioned, the soft boxes, the OCF soft boxes, every single one of them is discounted. Um, and that's gonna be, I think, till the end of the year. 
there's a question in the chat. They assume that there is an adapter for the A2 to mount standard soft boxes. Say that again? Is there an adapter for the A2 to mount other soft boxes? Yes, like so you're, a, you're actually, th that's a great question, whoever asked it, thank you. So there is an adapter for this, so that, you can, so that it will allow you to use these soft boxes, the bigger soft boxes, on this as well. So there's an, it's an OCF adapter too. Why they have, we're so good at naming products, it's amazing to me. <laughs> we, our company is the worst at, sorry, somebody's from Sweden listening, I apologize. The worst at naming products I've ever seen because it's OCF2 and it's you know, OCF1, OCF2. The difference, I don't know. They just can't figure out more names than you know, A1, A2, A10 and it all sounds the same and everybody gets confused. But anyway, so these are our lights, this is what we're using, these are what we have on sale. I guess you, post it, you popped it up there, okay, good. Um, so those are the sales we have, the specials, and again, you can find everything in the, where is it? It's in the description. In the description, okay. So now what I'd like to do is I'm gonna go through and talk to you about the lighting and the lighting setup that we have, um, and we're gonna shoot some pictures. But before we do that, I'm gonna go through the, the um, I'm gonna put this to the side. And we're gonna talk about the lighting setup that we have. So, um, you guys are familiar with Profoto, right? Anybody here? Everybody here has an idea what we're, do what we're doing? So we, if I can just grab the camera for a second. So this is the uh, Profoto remote. Um, this remote allows you to shoot with these lights, TTL or manual. So, and you can also do something called um, uh, exposure lock, which is take your first picture in TTL and then it locks in the exposure on all the lights. You switch it to manual, and now I can adjust each light individually. Um, I can adjust each light individually in groups, right? So I can put, uh, I have groups A, B, C, D, E, and F, and I can adjust each light. So I'll put, so normally what I do is the main light is A, um, the side light is B, and the background light is C. We also have two additional lights, which is D and, uh, D and E, I think, right? D and E? Okay, hold on to that. So um, we're gonna talk about how we set this up and why we set it up. So we're gonna do the basic setup, which is that we're talk what we've done is we've, if you see the photograph that's up there, that's the photograph that was taken prior, uh, prior to you guys coming in. And um, it was shot with a, this has a gel on the top of this light. It's just popping into an umbrella. We wanna show you that you can do this very, very simply. One of the beautiful parts about Profoto, it just gets you there quicker. The reliability, the flash duration, the recycling time is just better than the other lights on the market. Um, and it's easy to use. So if you take a look here, you see this light is, is with the blue gel on. Um, and that's gonna, that's, what that's doing is lighting the background. Then we have this, the next light. Uh, and again, we set up each one of these individually, right? So we did the background first, then we did the overhead light, right? And what we did is we put some cinefoil. You guys are familiar with cinefoil, I hope. Uh, we put some cinefoil. We have a magnum reflector on there. It's called a, an OCF magnum reflector. And we put a, um, we put some cinefoil on it to keep the light from spilling onto the background. Of course, we want this light to fill out the background and this to keep it from spilling onto the background. Um, we, uh, and then, the, then our next light is this one, which is, uh, Trooper, can you pop this on? Excuse me, can you pop, pop this one on, A? Okay, thanks. Put the modeling light on. So this is our, uh, this is our main light, right? So this is, this is set up as light number A, and this is gonna do the a fill light into the subject's face. Now, Normally, you don't want to really go with a very, very strong, not normally, but it, it really depends on the look that you want. But if you notice in her face, the photograph of her face, the light is hitting her and it's coming across her face in a very, uh, I should say, Ken's face. Um, uh, you can take a look at it here. And it's coming across and creating a shadow on this side of her face. That's because of the way we placed it. And it's a harder light because it's a smaller light, right? The bigger the light source, the harder the, the bigger the light source, the softer the light, the smaller the light source, the harder the light. Wow, I almost messed that up. And I've been, only been doing this for like 30 years. So, um, so I'm gonna move this box out of the way. Uh, if I just, what? I just wanna show the, the cinephile part of things. A lot of photographers go, no one can hear you. No one can hear you, here. Okay, you, okay. Yeah, so, um, so the cinephile, the way we've placed it here is, and you can, again, the reason we love cinephile is because you can adjust it, you can move it into different positions, and you can basically watch how the light is affecting here, and then you can take the light and bring it where you want it to. So there are times when what we're gonna do is take the cinephile and let it flow onto the bottom of the background so that we can have the blue fade into a white, right? So, and this is the simplest way to do this, right? So you have uh, blue on the background, 
you have a white light here, and then we have a gelled and gridded light here. I think it is. No? I may have been drinking. So um, I may have forgotten. So this, this light here is it's just gridded, and, um, and that's the light that's going to hit her directly in the face. Um, not in the, that sounded terrible, directly in the face. It's going gonna, it's gonna to light her face, light Ken's face. Um, the two lights that we have here, these are the A2s. So by the way, up here, I think, which light is this the OCF? I mean, this is the uh, B10X plus or B10X? So this is a B10X. The light in the back here, I think, is a B10X plus. I may be making all of this up. I'm not really sure. And these are B10Xs. We have one plus in here somewhere. I'm not really sure where it is. But so we can use, again, we can use a lo uh, one that's going to give us a little more power, one that's going to use a little less power. Right now, uh, because we're shooting in an ISO that's, that's easy for us to light, uh, easy, easy for us to light, we don't have to use the overpowering lights. We don't have to use a 500 watt second. A 250 will do. Um, and these lights are only 100 watt seconds, these two that are here, but they're going to give us the, they're going to give us the additional light that you see coming across the background. Right, so as you're looking at the background, you see that light coming across, and that's going to give us that light as well. Okay, any questions? No, I'm rambling. It sounds terrible. All right, so. Do um, you want to do one by one? What's that? Yeah, so let's, let's do each light, and we'll take a picture with each light. All right, here, shoot, shoot away. So if you can stand in. Thank you. So while Troop is shooting, I'm going to describe what we're doing here. So what we're going to do is... Um, we're going to shoot each light individually, and I'm going to show you how we set these up. So he turned, he turned off all the other lights right from his remote. Hopefully he did. And we're just going to put the light from the background, and you're going to see how that appears as we shoot. Okay? So that's, going to, that's our first light. That's what we have to do, and we have to determine if the light... What's that? Okay. That's okay. Let, let, me, let me turn this off. Um, okay. So... Take another shot. So we build on our lighting, right? So we always want to we want to light a specific area, and make sure it's lit like we want, and see how much it's going to affect the rest of the shot. So if you take a look on the shoulders, you're going to see that that light, that blue light, spills a little bit, but not enough to make a difference. Um, and so the next light we're going to do is the one right over the top of Ken's head. Ken, say your full name. Kenzie's, and I can't say Ken. Well, I did just did say Kenzie, so uh, this is Ken yeah, I did. I I'm, I'm going to practice from now on. Kenzie's, but so this is the light. Well, you have both of them on now, so turn that one off. Oh, I thought we were just building up. Okay, we can do that. No, no, that's fine. So now we have the we have the background. We are seeing the light hit the background. The blue is filling out the background. This light is giving a little bit of light onto the top of the head. Can you come forward just a hair? Just uh, go back a little bit, right there. Take another shot. So watch, notice the top of the hair, and that's just going to give us a little bit of fill. And again, we're keeping this cinefoil on here to keep the light flowing from flowing onto the background unless we want it to. All right, so you're seeing the second light. Let, let's, add the, let's add the third light. What's that? Uh, no, let's do that last. Let's do that last. Okay, so let's turn this one on. Yep, I'll turn the other one on. So this light is giving us a hair light. It's going to give us a little bit of edge light on the subject's face. Okay. Now the power settings we set prior to this um, to adjust them the way we wanted them. The reason that we, the reason that we adjusted them the way uh, that we did is because we want to see how much saturation we're going to be getting on the background. So right now you're looking at the most recent shot. So that streak coming across is literally done from an A2 that has two gels on it, it's double gelled, and it has a Fresnel front on it. I don't know if it's Fresnel or Fresnel, anybody know? It's Fresnel? Okay, I, I guess I'm French, so it, French is Fres, Fresnel. So, uh, and that light is giving us a beautiful spread of light, and it's creating that streak across the back. On the edge, uh, is this light on, Chupel? Um, yeah, it is, it is. It is? Okay, I'm gonna turn the modeling light on. So this is, we have a blue gel on this, and the reason that we put the blue gel on it is because we wanted the gel look of the background to be reflected back into the subject. So the background has a gel light, and uh, we decided that we're gonna have a gel coming on the side of her face, so it looks like it's one light. It doesn't look like it's two separate lights. So can you fire, the, you turning this one up? This one on. Okay, just, I, I wanna do another shot so you can see that. Yep. So, 
turn this one off, okay. and just do another shot so we can see if we can see where that blue is hitting. Sorry? By the way, even though Truple's shooting the pictures, I get copyright on all of them. I'm just saying. He thinks he has copyright on it, but he doesn't. I wish you guys can hear him because there's a lot of busting going on and you can't hear anything he's saying, which is probably a good thing. So if you see along the side of her face, along the cheekbone, you're going to see how that blue light comes and that effectively looks as though it's a light hitting the background and also the light is, so you're getting that look of that light and this light is just complementing it. Okay? Yes? yes? All right. Now we're going to add the last light, which is being done with a, a Yes, we have to do that. So how about I do this? Yep. I hold that. You adjust the light. You need this. No, no. Do, the, do it here. You got it, that one? Okay. So Truple is going to adjust the light so it's hitting Ken right in the face. So it's hitting her right in the face. Did I say that like four times? Uh, so it's, the light is hitting Ken in the face. Um, so she's spotlit where they want. Is that a little better? Is it, thank you. Attaboy. I used to speak in full sentences, but it's been a long time since I've done these, so now speaking in full sentences is completely out. <laughs> All right. Good. So what we have here is barn doors. We have a grid in here, and uh, according to Truple, we don't have a filter in there, but I think we have one, but he says we don't, so I'm going to go with that for now. Should we check? No, not right now. We'll check later, just to prove that I'm right, okay? So you good? All right, so one of the things we want to do is make sure that this light doesn't spill onto the background as well. Because what will happen is that will start to wash out the background. So we're going to do a quick shot. So if I can get him, uh, that's great. You just want to take the final shot. I did want to take the final shot. I didn't want it to be Truple, because that way I really get copyright on it, and I don't like it. So, Truple, shoot another one. Let me, let me adjust this. Can you, have your, can you cheat your face? By the way, you guys like my booties? What do you think of these? They're pro foots, pro photo pro foots. Um, yeah, I'm going to open it up. Uh, uh, see? Oh, wait. You're right. There is no. There's no grid in there. There's no gel in it. You were right. Okay. All right. Yes. You, you want to hear one more time that you're right. Okay. Truple's right. Everybody hear that? Everybody got Truple's right. Anybody have any questions out there? Anybody? Any questions coming up on the... Yes. Right, so, so, what's that? Yeah, um, so the question was, um, how do we use these lights outdoors? Is that, no? Without all these lights, without professional setup, I have only some lights with my, for example, my... Well, the whole idea of this, well, so the question was, she only has sun to use, and, um, you know, it, it's, it's made by Profoto, by the way, the sun. Yeah. So I just wanted to let you know, it's one of our lights, so you actually do have a Profoto light. Um, so... Uh, the whole idea of this is that we're going to be using a um, outside. You, you just have to, you can use these lights to fill in. You can use these lights to overpower the sun. I want a spontaneous photo. Oh, I saw this, I want to touch this photo. Without all this... So you, you, it, may, it, not be, it may not be appropriate for you to, to use lighting outdoors. Okay. You know, it may be more appropriate for you just to use a reflector or, um, um, or sometimes it's appropriate to use lighting outside and sometimes it's not. But, but the difference, the angle yes, whichever. right, so, so the, the whole idea is the beauty of being able to shoot with strobe outside is that you're able to control your environment and setting, instead of letting your environment control you. So by adjusting your shutter speed, you can take daytime and turn it into nighttime, and you can take nighttime and turn it into daytime. You can basically adjust how things look. Um, Vanessa, Vanessa Joy, hi Vanessa. Vanessa does one of the most beautiful sunset looks with our lighting where she gels, the, she gels one of the lights um, and she creates a sunset look when there is no sun setting. So the whole idea of this is that you're able to create and create an environment and a look that you want. By the way, did I shoot that one or did you? Did you shoot that one? Just checking. Okay, so um, you're able to shoot and you're able to control the light outside and not, let the, not have to worry about where the sun is and, and, and where those things are. So I answered a, 
very long answer to a very short question. So does anybody else in the audience have any questions? Anybody online? What I'll say about what you're asking, there's plenty of stuff on Adorama TV about using sunlight and that this is a demo specifically for something that you're, you're not asking about. So that's probably like the first kind of like thing. Right. So you might want to check out the rest of Adorama TV and just search sunlight portraits, stuff like that. You'll find plenty of information on it. Actually, I know that Ab Cisse, if you look him up on Adorama TV, he just did something on shooting outdoors. Ab Cisse, S-E-S-A-Y. Do you like that I'm plugging you, Ab? Are you okay with this? Good, I hope you like it. Um, really, one of the most talented photographers I know and great lighting guy. Um, so the, so we, we've gone through these two lights. This is our third light, and, this is, and we're gonna show you a couple of variations on this um, where we're gonna turn off some of the lights and then we're gonna turn on, turn on some. Mm -hmm. Okay, ready? What's that? Yeah, we're gonna try the softbox in a second. We'll just do a couple more shots so I can pretend I did something. Um, great. Can you keep moving? Good. So Ken, uh, being a professional model, um, really has, she really, really great moves. So she knows as I'm shooting and when I'm firing, she's making the next move. We've talked about this ahead of time because we photographed her previously. So she knows the look and the feel that we want for the, for the shot. Um, everything from her hair and makeup was, was done by her, but, um, with, with intention, we had shot her before and we photographed her before and uh, we had the same kind of look. So I'm also going to just change up. Now I'm going to change up a light and show you what we do when we take, a, take this and we put a softbox on it. Take the one by maybe the strip. Ab says he's blushing. Thank you, Cliff. He is? Okay. He's so cute. Here. He's adorable. Take this three foot octave. We can do this. Okay. What's that? Yeah. So we're going to do the three foot octave and we're going to bring it in closer and we're going to bring it over the top of the subject. By the way, the last shot I just did, I really like that the best. Is that yours, Trupal, or is that mine? I'm going to pretend it's mine because I like it a lot. So I do like it, and I like that streak coming across the background. Now, the beauty of this is it's really simple. We've done it in a very, very small area here. This is kind of, what size do we have here, 10 by 10? Uh, you got roughly 11 by 13. 11 by 13. So we based it around shooting in a New York City apartment, right? With very high ceilings, though. So um, the beauty of this apartment. is that you can do these things, and you can get this kind of lighting effect. And you can do this kind of look in a very, very small space. Again, the lighting is small. It's bouncing. You're, you're, you're able to utilize, like, for example, if I didn't have an umbrella, what would I do? i just bounce it right into my ceiling and have a similar or, or close effect. Yeah. Right? So I bring the light up as high as I could, and I bounce it into the ceiling. Um, for this light, to point it down, to put it over the top, um, again, just all you need is a C-stand and a boom arm. Um, and you don't need anything fancy, uh, just to bring that right over to the top of the subject. Can you come forward a little bit and go this way? So now we're gonna change this up a little bit. And um, what we've done is we've taken an OCF softbox, a three foot octa, and we've put it directly over the top. I'm gonna show you the little bit of difference. Now, there is a lot more because we're using a larger light source. The light coming in from the front is softer, right? So the larger the light source, the softer the light. We have a very, very soft light coming across the subject. And so it will give a little bit more wrap on the subject's face. Right, so it won't be as harsh falling off. The edge difference between the shadow and the highlight is going to be, um, is going to be greater. It's not going to be as short and cut off as it was previously. So let's do a quick shot, do a test, and let's see how we like it. It may affect the background this light, I'm not sure. But uh, question what your camera settings and lens setup is. So, my, so the lens that I'm using is a 45 to 100, and I'm using it at about, um, about 80. And this is on a GFX 100S, so it's a medium format 100 to four, 45 to 100. Right, one of my favorite cameras to use. Um, uh, so, so base, and what else do you want to know? The shutter speed? Uh, shutter speed's 100. You didn't really go over your camera setting, so what ISO, aperture, and all that? Okay. Uh, ISO is 100. The uh, aperture is f4, and the shutter speed is... Um, 180th. 180th of a second, okay? So can you... So I'd like you just to cheat your face back up at the light there. Hands on the hips, if you could. That's one hand. That's great. Very nice. So I want to see if we're losing anything in the background. Can you grab that and shoot some shots? So what I want to show you is that so this is not really affecting the background that much, but it is giving a softer transition. So if you take a look on the side of her face, you're going to see a softer transition from, from the highlight to the shadow area. Right? And that's what we're looking for. Again, using a bigger light source to keep, that, keep the light still um, directed at her, but uh, in a much softer way. So what we did is we just basically increased the size of the light from here 
to about three feet, which is the size of the softbox. The depth of the softbox and the, and the filter on the inside or the silk on the inside of that is also helping to diffuse the light and creating movement of the light. So as it's coming through, it's gonna continue to give you wrap. Okay, so, um, good? Yeah. Anybody have any questions about what we're doing here? No? Yes? Um, what color do you have each one of the lights set up? So, yeah, so each one, is, each one is set up differently. The way we started out was um, originally was shooting TTL. Remember, I, I don't know if you heard earlier. So the question was, what are the settings that I have on each light, the power that I have on each light? So what we did is we basically started out with a, a TTL setting. I took the first picture in TTL, and then I saw how the lights looked. And TTL basically is where the camera and the lights are deciding what the exposure should look like of each one of the lights. All right? So then I go in and we manually adjust each one based on not necessarily on the power, just on the look of the shot. Does that make sense? Yes. But I think I just made up that answer, but okay. No, no, it, no okay. That answer is correct. Oh, it is. But, but, um, oh, wait. Okay, good. Well, I was just told my answer was correct. That's my awesome. Real, my real yes, sir. Is, yes, sir. Um, it depends on the ratio that I'm setting up the lights, but I can, right, the only, the, oh, right, so, okay, so the question was, what would I lose if I only used A2s on this? Um, probably not very much. Um, I, I lose a little bit of, uh, a little bit of output of light. What's that? I think you'd lose nothing. Yeah. Because, yeah. Given the close nature of the Probably nothing. As long as I had the same type, the only thing that I'm losing a little bit of is I'm starting out with a smaller light source. So it's starting out as a little bit of a harder light, but I can make it bigger by using one of the soft boxes that I showed you earlier, right? Yeah. So I can do the same things with the, with the A2s, um, and, uh, and just as long as I have a remote, I can control it exactly the same. Well, you just use the adapter to these soft Correct, I can use the adapter, but again, we're starting off with a smaller, the question is again, is what would I be losing with an A2? Um, and and Truple said, rightly so, that um, we're probably losing nothing with it. Uh, and, and again, because we're talking about a, a small area, if I was shooting a bigger area or I had a, a lot more um, depth that I needed to cover, oh, I'm sorry, I had a lot more depth that I needed to cover, um, I probably would use a more powerful light just to get a greater depth of field. But here, we actually want to shallow depth of field. We want to throw that background out of focus. Any other questions? Yes? Could you repeat the question for me? Thank you. A question about your lighting. Uh, so the, the light, I think you have an 11 volt 50 year E light giving a streak on the background. Is the reason you chose that kind of direction and angle to motivate the heat? Or no? It has nothing to do with that. Um, or is it just looks cool? Just cool thank you. So the question was, do we ha did we do this light coming across the background with intention? Kind of yes. I mean, we did it, but not, re not, only, not as a relationship to the key. Um, we just did it because we thought the street going across really helped add motion to the picture. If you just shoot it as a static picture, it doesn't feel like motion. When she's bending her hip and moving in, um, you're creating that streak across, which adds motion and image, uh, uh, motion to the image, even though it's a still image. Everybody see that or agree? Yes? I also feel a lot of this is, a lot of lighting is play. Um, I encourage not to start with something concrete in mind. It's good to have an idea, but just play with it. And that's when you will find things like this. The and original idea was to just have a little yellow on the left side, but then Seth walked in and this happened. You know what I mean? So, <laughs> yeah, so it, so it literally is play. Like, I right. highly encourage you to just play with it. The more you do it, the more you find out. Right. The, the name of this photo is Seth Happens. Okay. So, <laughs> it just some, sometimes he just walks in. No, actually, we were, we were playing earlier and we were trying to decide on what we wanted the look to be. And, um, you know, we, we literally had time to play. It was great. We, we got here early so that we can just have fun. Um, as soon as the model showed up, we were able to take our ideas and see how they looked with her in the shot. And so, um, uh, so this is what we ended up with. Since we're talking about it, let's move things around. And yeah, so since I just got called out, uh, yes. this is what happens when three guys who light all the time come together and go, well, I like it like this, I like it like that, like this, and not making guesses because you know what will happen. I just, right? wanna, I just want you to know that the final idea is mine. Okay? Yeah. No matter what they okay. say. <laughs> so uh, no, ma no, 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 no. So no, no, matter what, no matter what they say, the idea is still mine. Okay, I'm just saying.
No, it really is a collaborative thing, and it was wonderful to do this because we had a lot of fun doing this. Um, so did you change it? Okay, so we changed the light. So just, again, adding a little bit of more uh, hot spot to the background. We've also put it right behind her, directly behind her. Can you come forward just a little bit? Okay, now walk back into the light. Uh, so here, it's not. Light. It's more a question of asymmetry versus symmetry, what you want to go, how you balance your shot. It's up to you. This is None of this is right or wrong, right? But you're getting to a place that you're happy with an image you're creating, right? right? So Either way, we, give them more to look. Who cares? Good. So we're going to change. Whoop. Did I lose him? Okay. So let's just take a quick look at this. Can you shoot your face towards the light again? How's that light in the background? Is it coming up? Okay. Turn the power. Okay. Got it. Okay. Good. Thank you. Okay. Let's see how that looks. Hmm. So, Take again, Take yeah, yeah, and, it, and it's tilted towards the other. Go directly behind her with it, Chupal. Yep. Okay, so what he's doing is he's taking off the Fresnel. We have a Fresnel on, the, on that, which is giving us more of a spread of light. So we would like it more, um, in, instead of, instead of come, you're going to see a little hot spot here now, right behind her. I'm going to shoot with Chupal in the shot. Oh, I missed. I know. Let's just see. So where we have a, a more smooth background, a more gradated background, instead of having a hot spot like we were having earlier, right? We created that look. And the way that we did that is as we move the light closer to the background and we took off the, the Fresnel, it's giving more of a spread of light and it's spreading it out more instead of concentrating it and giving a uh, more of a specific spot light on the background. Okay. What's that? No, not with me. Okay, here, Trupal. Let me change this. Okay. So, also one of the other things is if you're in apartments in New York, sometimes you don't have the height to be able to shoot up into a subject. So what do you do? You have the subject sit down, right? So you're going to bring the subject down to an eye level, and you're just going to shoot from a low angle, as Trupal's doing here. I don't know if you guys can see, but as he's doing right here, shooting from a low angle and shooting up at the subject and having the light looks great. So we talked about this earlier and actually we photographed, um, we photographed Ken earlier with the lights in the shot. We just kind of like the look of it. We think it looks cool. And again, just giving you a completely different look. If you notice also, you're gonna see a little bit of a um, uh, vignetting on the top of the image. The vignetting is essentially, I think, we, I think it's from the umbrella, but I'm not positive. Right? But I don't mind it as much, and I, I don't think it really bothers me. I kind of like the look of this, and I like the light stands being in the shot. If we could pull back further, I'd even ask him to do that. Can you go wider on that, or is that as wide as you can go? Yeah. If you back up to Chicago, it will get wider, I promise you. It may be. No, I don't think so. What did you, why, did you, why did you put a lens hood on? I always tell you not to use a lens hood. It was. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, no, it's still there. And the lens hood's off. No, the, no, the two corners there. aren't there anymore. Yeah. It was here and here. Okay, but there is something coming from up here. There was something coming up from there. there. Okay. If that's my daughter calling to say she's in the hospital, I'm, I'm on my way. Uh, context for the online. He, he's expecting a grandkid, so it's not hospital-like. <laughs> yes. So normally I'm not this nervous, but I'm nervous not because of this. This is easy. What she's doing is hard, so I'm super excited about it. No, well, they don't know. They're like, well, thank you for the context. That's why I have you here. You're supposed to add in, jump in. All right, so we're going to try another completely different kind of look. What I'd like to do now is, you want to try the black background? Yeah. Okay, let's try it. So what we're going to do is switch this around a little bit, switch it up. We're going to bring, uh, we're going to bring the back, black background down. Let me hold this. You got to pull stands or no? What's that? You got to pull stands or no? We, no. We just, You're just going to drop it? Yeah, we're just going to drop it straight there. Okay. So, Seth, can you hold that? Thank you. So what we're going to do is we're going to do the same kind of shot, the same kind of look. We're just going to drop a black background down, and we're going to do the same kind of look, the same kind of shot, except that now what we're going to do is take these edge lights, and instead of having them pointing at the background, we're going to have them point at the subject at the back of her head. Can you stand up for a second? So what I'm going to do is we're going to make these so that this light is coming off, the orange color light is coming off one side of her face. Um, and that, the blue light is coming off the other side. And now we're going to photograph. So 
simple, simple. We have a basic lighting setup, and now what we're doing is we're adding other things, other ways to look at it, right? So we're not sure how this is going to look because we haven't shot this before, but it's, it's the first look. All right, Tuple, just step up and take the shot. Just one second, one second. I like being your assistant. Mm -hmm. I do. You're just highest paid assistant he's ever had, by the way. Absolutely. Thanks, yeah, you're welcome. Okay, so here's another, no, it looks beautiful. You shoot it, shoot it, I love it. So, beautiful color, and it, it's a nice shot, but a completely different look than we just had, and a completely different feel. Um, I think kind of in a way a little bit more sophisticated than what we had before, although the, the shot before was nice. Uh, less motion in it, but I still like the edge lighting, and I like the way it happened. So, basically, all we did is we dropped the black background, we took the two lights, and we have this light with a Fresnel on the front of it, or Fresnel, depending on how you call it. Um, and we have a blue gel. I know, I know, I'm going to go both now. So we have a blue gel and we have a Fresnel on the front and we have a yellow gel or warming gel here, right? So I think I'd like to, just Chupa, one second. I think I'm going to bring this up just a little bit. You want to leave it in the shot? I can move it further into it? Okay. Let's just do that. Okay, so I'm going to bring it up a little bit. I'm going to shoot another shot. Yes. Can you guys see? I'm sorry. I'm stepping in your way here. By the, any questions? Are there any questions online? Anything I can help with? No. Nope. Saying congrats, Grandpa Cliff. Thank you, thank you. They call me Poppy. Actually, but if you guys are watching, you got like a hundred of you in there and only thirty nine likes. The guy's about to have a, a grandkid. Come on, hit. Come like on, at come least. on. Likes on the grandkid? No. Okay. This is how he's going to feed that kid. Hit that like. is that is by likes. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to feed the kid That's by the likes. That's the currency of the yes. future, and you all know it. Just yes. hit like. Not in my validation. world, it isn't. I could care less about the likes. I, you know. All right, so a completely different look, a completely different feel. Now let's just turn this off. We'll turn this light off. Drupal can do it actually from there. Turn this light off. Mm -hmm. Turn this light off. And now take another shot. I just want to see how that looks. Without the gels in the background. Now you're going to notice without the edge lighting, how because she's wearing black, she's kind of going into the background. She's melding with that background. So the reason that we have those, these lights on from behind is to separate the subject from the background. Um, sometimes it works to do that. Sometimes you don't have to do that, right? So the other thing that we can do is I can bring you closer to, bring you in here. Take this light and we're going to move this in. We're, keep going back. We're not going to worry about this light. Actually, can you turn that one off? Mm -hmm. And we put these on wheels. We put this light on wheels because it's the main light. So I'm going to tilt it up a little bit. You put it on wheels because I left my stand here. That's true. <laughs> I've got to take that home one day. Yep. Okay, take another shot. Just want to check how it goes. Okay. All right, so the, the thing that you're going to see about this now, what it's doing, it's also lighting the background. So it's giving a little bit of too much light to the background. So probably what I would do is let's bring I like it. You no. do? You do? No. Yeah, so it's giving the background more of like kind of a gray look. Yeah. Yes, somebody has a question? Yeah. Can you repeat that question? If she was wearing white as an outfit, how would you change? What kind watch of background watch, would you use? Watch what with we're going to do. Oh my God, she has a white coat. Here yes. We go. So the white is going to help give more separation from the background. She won't blend in as much. But the easier way for me, the way I like it better, is I like to put a light that's giving a little bit of light coming from behind to add a little bit of uh, difference between the subject and the background. It's also nice, Cliff, because you got cool tone light everywhere and the warm tone is her skin. Like in this shot, all yep. the warmth is on her skin, which is really nice to keep the focus of the viewer and a lot of life to your subject in a vapid space, you know? Yeah, now, for example, basically, you need black background that matches any colors. Uh, but for example, I'm wearing purple or pink. Do you choose different backgrounds? Yeah, yeah. So, so we just, I just threw this up just to sh show you a contrast in colors. The question was, do I use different color backgrounds? It's all about mood and about the feel, what, what I'm looking to do. This one, I'm, to be honest with you, kind of, I just want to play and I want to have fun. And hopefully you're having fun watching us do this. I also feel use the microphone, use the microphone. It's Thank always you. important to work in your color palette. Like, it is important to do the homework and then have a mood board and have a color palette and then shoot in. You can look up a little bit about color wheels and palettes and there are lots of... 
Well, I think you have to for this as well if you're looking for a certain kind of like if you that's the secret I guess. Yeah. yeah. And that's why we had the warming gel, the warming light which was more of a uh, an orangey yellowish color and we had the blue because they work really well together and they and they they complement each other, right? We don't want something I mean sometimes we want it to go completely opposite. But yeah. question. Just keep in mind that like everything in a frame is a language, right? You're saying something so like Telling a color story is part of that, whether you want it to be complimentary, where they go against each other, or they're saying a monotone type feel. You have to kind of make that intent before you start shooting, right? I think the one main point about lighting that most people miss is that lighting, all lighting should do is help communicate the story that yes. you want to tell. That. Right? So if you're not, if you don't, if it doesn't help to tell the story of the subject that you're photographing or what you want to say about that subject, it's bad lighting. It's great lighting if it does the opposite, where people are seeing the picture and, and um, seeing and feeling the same things that you felt about it or you wanted to communicate about the photograph. What is a photograph? It's literally taking a picture of light and we're photographing light. And so we want that light to help be our paintbrush, to help tell the story. Yeah, right? and, and Trupal just pulled up the two we just shot, right? So you, on the left, you've got a bit more of an edge. You've got that hot spot on the left, but there's not much to that outfit. It's black on black, but it's more about the edging out of a geometric shape and feeling it that way. Sleek, you know, a little bit more punch in your face. On the right, you, you're kind of led into her skin tone. You've got that soft fabric. It's there, but it's not overpowering. You're not kind of conflicting between what you're looking at. These are the same space, same setups, different theories. So, like, it's really about the intent before you start just slinging lights around, and then you sling those lights around and have a little fun and dial it. But you got to get to a goal. It's, if you can just keep saying anything off the top of your head, but no one's going to know what you're communicating if, unless you think about what you're trying to say. Same thing. What Cliff is saying is right. You use the light to communicate. Um, there are two questions in the chat. What are the questions? Uh, one, are you doing the newborn photography for your grandkid? Oh, that's a great question. Um, no. I, okay. <laughs> a, doc a doctor should never operate on their family member. I don't take pictures. That, I'll have Chupal do that. Or Chupal. Ab. Oh, or yeah, both Ab. of them. Oh, Ab. That'll be Yes, I got Chupal and Ab. And then Tiger White in the chat is asking, can you use the B-series droves with the A-series using a Pro Photo remote? Yes, of course. Yeah. Oh. yeah. We use the same remote. Our same remote will, will work with any of the Pro Photo lights. And by the way, the A10... One of the things that most people don't know, they're like, why is that light so expensive? Um, <laughs> no, they do. They say it, right? Don't they say it? Look, I love that. I asked I that know. the first time it came out. I said, Cliff, you got to be kidding me. And then I ended up buying five. So, so well, the, the reason that it is is because built into this is this remote, right? So this remote is built into this so that all the things that I can do with this remote, I can do from this light. So I can put this on the top of a camera. I can use it with the flash on, with the flash off. I can just use it as a remote if I want. I can control all my lights. I can shoot TTL and manual the same exact way that I can do this. The, the chat is saying Cliff 2024. <laughs> what are they saying? They're going to vote for you in 2020. Okay, how did I do? Yeah, good? You okay. You have a new hashtag, see? Friends, <laughs> patriots, Americans, decent and good human beings. I love people. You guys on, online missed this earlier, but I was doing my, my political speech. No, nah, but I'm going to just, for, for serious though, right there is his social, all you watching. This is a legend in our industry. He's not going to say it himself, but no, this is like that, everybody's that's crazy uncle. That's, that's embarrassing. Do we, everybody here that shoots live could not do it without a guy like Cliff in this industry. And Thank he you. taught everybody everything everywhere. I'm telling you, you learned something from Cliff in this industry. Don't lie. If you shoot here pro, you know it. Check is in the mail. Checks in the mail. Yeah. <laughs> it's always going to bounce anyway. What do you need? What kind of lighting you need? What I, do need you need? I need free gels. Gels. Okay. <laughs> here, you can have them all right now. Take it take anything you want. Okay. You can have all mine. So, any other questions? Are there any other questions up there? Any questions from the audience? Yes? Do you normally like, adjust the majority on the images? Yes. Um, basic capture one adjustments. You can take my class. Could, to speak into so the microphone. Wait, the question the on microphone? the chat, just for the chat, is there any adjustments being done to the shots on the screen? And Trupal's going to run you through it. Before or after? Um, you might want to. Um, I have um, basic adjustments, contrasts, pulled back highlights. Um, and I normally like to work on um, skin tone. Just Did you mention that you were shooting into Capture One? Yes, I'm shooting into Capture One. Okay. Um, this is before and after. I like before better, but just my thing. No, no, I'm joking. I, I like, <laughs> after looks much better, right? Um, I can do that with other, other images as well. 
Actually, uh, that one I do like the before yeah, better. It's nice and soft. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, any other questions? Whatever. There was somebody else raising their hand. <laughs> but Did you just say, wait, wait, you didn't hear that online, uh, thank God. Ad nope. Adjustments are the same thing as lighting. You're, you're choosing the style you want to put out there in the end. It's your shot in the end, right? So color grading is just as much as important as lighting in the end. So you might like it raw out of the camera because you chose that camera and how it looks that way. Some people might like to stylize it like Truple over here. You know, it's just, it's your call, you know? Especially with color theory. Yes, another question? Somebody else? Adam. Yeah. Is there a... Oh, Adam, no question? Yes. Yeah, is there a spend to actually notice from like our cell phone, powerful cell phone, some day could replace a certain level of professional camera or we can just uh, make this handy to carry it you're, you're asking an old man, so I'm going to say absolutely not. So the question was, can the, can the iPhone replace, from an old man, yeah. okay? AI or future whatever, right? Right, right. No, no, look, uh, there's, there's a lot of pictures. I mean, I take a lot of pictures of my family. I take a lot of pictures um, using a cell phone, but the majority of the time I'm, I'm using it uh, when I want to shoot something that's for real, something important to me, I always break out a camera. But that's just me. Uh, and and, and I, I do use a cell phone quite a bit, but not for everything. Um, I think... Personally, I think that the best camera is the one you have it on you at the Absolutely. moment. Absolutely. Um, so it could be an SLR or a phone. And I encourage not to get wrapped up into this no vortex of I need a new gear every year. Um, you may get there at a point, but right, you don't, I don't need new cameras. Yeah. Just need new lights every year. Yeah. <laughs> but did I say that out loud? Yeah. I didn't mean to. That's it. Just okay. Just to add on that, it, it's it's also different tools, different jobs. If I'm trying to be fast, nimble, get things shared really quickly, it doesn't really matter, cool. If I'm looking for a specific look, type of color, type of depth of field, type of look at a lens, characteristics, whatever, different story, right? If I need crazy resolution so that an e-commerce company can do a scroll over Zoom to see every thread on a jacket, there's a different story there, and it's a different tool. So it's, it's not something's taking over another, it just means that there's other options out there, and just because phones are getting better just means you have another better tool. That's all it is. So I just, I just also want to make one other point um, you can still hear me, right? I just want to make one other point that, and I said earlier that we just we were just playing and having fun, but we really did go in with a specific intention. When we did a pre-shoot to this shoot, we photo we photographed in Brooklyn, and we had a studio set up, and we really played with the kind of lighting that we wanted, the look that we wanted. So we really did have a feel. Then when we got here and we got what we were looking for, then we took it to the next step and just had fun with it. Right, so you get to a certain level as long as you're you're telling the story that you want to tell, and you're adding um, lighting to it. You're just going to continue to tell that story and just adjust the light so that it so that it still feels the same and works oh. um, for the model. Yes. Someone in the chat just mentioned this. You actually can use all these Pro Photo strobes with your cell phone as the camera, and it will trigger. Very good. You know what? You know what? Where were you on that one, Cliff? I don't, you know what? I, Is I was, this the ball you dropped on the am, floor? Am I, Jeez, <laughs> man. No. Wait, look at this. This guy's killing it for you. Did I mention I drink a lot? Yeah, you do drink a lot. I do. You're a vodka guy, right? Vodka guy, yeah. yes. Vodka guy. Anybody want to send me anybody? Any, so there, anything online, just let me know. There are send questions me. about doing black and white, and then there's any tips on getting into commercial photography. So black and white? So I do a lot of black and white shooting. Um, when I do my portraits, if you go online, you take a look at my Instagram, you're going to see um, a lot of black and white images that I do. Um, the reason... What's the pointing? I'm pointing at your social to give you some shout outs. You oh, thank you. Thank genius. you. I don't care about that. Um, so Influencer. But if you, but it, <laughs> so if you, if you go take a look, I do a lot of shooting in, in black and white. And generally, the reason that I do that is so that I can adjust the skin tone as much as possible. So if I'm shooting especially older people or I'm shooting people with more wrinkles or people who have issues, I can just expose the face where I'm losing all of that, where I, whereas in color, it would be very, very hard to get rid of. So that's my, that's my take on black and white, but I also do love black and white because that's where I came from. I came from a photojournalism background. I started out shooting, uh, shooting for newspapers. Um, so black and white was my thing, and I still love it, and I still feel that that's more creative and more artistic than necessarily shooting in color. But that's just me, right? And any tips on, any tips on getting into commercial photography? Um, don't? No, no, I'm joking, I'm joking, I'm joking, I'm joking. Um, no, I, I think if it's your passion and it's something that you love, um, I, I, I think you, 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 just have to, you just have to keep working. Like the best photographers that I know are people who shoot whether or not they have an assignment, whether or not they have a job. They're shooting all the time. I can't do anything, but, like I have no other life except for my family and this. Um, I love to take pictures. Like if you give me a choice between doing this and, eat, you know, I'll, I'll travel, but I'll only travel to take pictures. Like, 
that's, that's what I love. So in, in answer to your question, I think you just have to keep doing it and find your look. Find your, what you like to take pictures of. And make sure you're photographing things that you like because it will just, it will just show, show in the images, right? So, um, and once you find that and once you find a place that you can sell that um, or that you can find somebody who's interested in your look and your style, um, then, then the pictures will sell themselves and your photography will sell themselves. Yes? Can you repeat this for me? Yes. The question is, do you need to specialize or is it better be a generalist? You know, it's, a, it's, a, it's very, very hard to say today. It really is. I, I don't want to tell anybody not to take a job. But um, it's hard, it, you know, it, what, what it was for me is back in the day, there was something called stock photography. And, um, and I used to shoot for a stock photo agency. Uh, my wife used to run a photo agency in New York, and I used to shoot for that one. And then there was uh, another company called FPG that I used to work for. Um, but the problem was shooting stock photography really affected my other image, the other images that I was taking. Because when you're shooting stock, it's more like a general image, and it's giving you something where it's just trying to say something in an image but it didn't have any style or look that really was me, right? So in, in answer to your question, if you, can, if you can make the adjustment, I have a problem doing it, but if you can make the adjustment to shoot weddings one day, do portraits another day, and then do commercial photography another day, and you can adjust to those things and make those all work for you, that's fantastic. Nice. Uh, the question in the chat, on the remote, what's in between Air 1 and Air 2 as your settings? Okay, so uh, this, the question is about the Air remote. Um, this Air remote has, um, is, is a, the newest remote that we have. It's called an, um, Connect Pro. thank you, a Connect Pro. Wow. Um, it's a Connect Pro, and the Connect Pro actually in Group 1, it has two different, uh, two different settings. One is Group 1, which will allow you to see the changes, but not the actual numbers that are on the screen. So if I change this a full stop, it will show me it won't show me the actual number, it will just show me the number, the amount that I changed it, right? If I go to group two or um, mode. mode two, if I go to mode two, it will show me the actual numbers on the, on the, back, of the, on the back of the light. So I know that if I went from uh, F5 to F6, or I went from number six to number five, it's telling me that I'm doing a one-stop difference in movement. Uh, and change. Here it's just showing you, um, if you're using uh, number one, it's only showing you the change, not the actual number that's appearing on the back of the uh, light. Yeah. Does that explain it? I think okay. one of the biggest differentiation is that one of those modes is better for the older light systems that Profoto makes. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. So the, the older light systems, you're probably going to use mode one. And for the newer lights, you're probably going to use mode two because it, 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 the, all of them will talk back to the remote. Yeah. Right? Yes. Did you have a question? Five, oh, that was five minutes? Oh, I thought you were waving at me. I was all excited. Yes. Another question. For a general lighting question, recently you did a shoot and got a very weird color cast from like a bright red shirt bouncing up at the skin. Mm -hmm. Would that be a position or a power issue or just trial and error? Uh, that, that's a tough one. You, you, you're going to have to you, you repeat, you repeat it. Uh. So the gentleman in the audience said uh, <laughs> it, he was shooting and he got a color cast of like a red shirt bouncing over someone's skin up into their face. It, what would be the issue with the lighting there? More or less. Yeah. All right. Right. So the thing that I would do in that case is if I had a lot of light, a lot of light reflecting off of this, I would focus my light on the subject's face and try to minimize the light that's hitting the subject and then bouncing into the face. So I would try to light specifically the face and light the body separately. Lots of times what I'll do is I'll use a... Um, uh, uh, a, an OCF softbox, let's say, or something on the top, like a three-foot octa or a two-foot octa, which is really going to focus, with a grid on it. You guys know what a grid is, right? So this is the grid. This is the front of the softbox. I'll use this to focus the light on the subject's face, and then, um, and, but I'll use it with the three-foot octa or two-foot octa, and then I'll pop this off, and I'll use this just on the body. So I'm lighting those two things separately, right? So if I'm lighting the body with this, I can adjust the amount of light that's hitting that to reflect back into the face, and I can add more white light into the subject's face. Make sense? Good, because I just made that up as well. Yep. <laughs> it sounded good to me. It sounded good in my head, so I just went with it. Yes. Any, are there any other questions? No? You sure? Anybody? Okay. No, pretty good. Um, 
if anybody at the, uh, as we're breaking down and we're finishing up, first of all, thank you very much for inviting me. Thank you for having me. Um, but uh, if anybody at the end here wants to step up and shoot some pictures, I'm, I'm welcoming to you. People online, I'm sorry I can't bring you with us. Um, but we're just going to step up and shoot some pictures if you guys want to shoot. You'd be happy to use my camera. I'm allowing you to. What the deal? And what was that? Oh, thank you very much. And the other thing is I just want to re-mention again is, that, um, uh, is about the sale that we have going on, which is you're buying any of the... Um, uh, the B10X or the B10X Plus, $300 off plus an additional 5%. If you're buying a two-head kit of either one of those, you get, an, you get the $600 off plus an additional 5%. Wow, this does sound like the Home Shopping Network. Um, and then in addition to that, all the A2s and the A10s, doesn't matter which one you get, A2, A10, um, those are also just 10% off. Okay? Not just, but 10% off. Yes? I just want to... So if you're thinking about the Pro Photo system or whatever, the A2 is a great place to start. It's a small light that you're going to do a lot more than you think with. I just want to put that out there because yeah. I'm heavy on that A2. I'm like everywhere, everywhere I go, I have A2s in me. So yep. if you're looking at like getting started, check out an A2. I promise yep. you. Thank you very much. Really, yes. Excuse me? Yes. Yeah. It's uh, Cliff Hausner. At Cliff Hausner. So C L I F F H A U S N E R. Cliff Hausner. The man's name. I'll, I'll be more practiced next time we do this. I'll be much better, I promise you. Um, you and I won't be as nervous. Do you want to do a sign off really quick? Or? No. All right, well, I'll do a sign-up for Cliff because he's new at this, apparently. Yes, I've never done watching, this before. Listen, if you guys are watching this channel, it's a new channel for Adorama. It's Adorama Events. Please hit subscribe. You think you're subscribed. You're not. You've been watching Adorama TV. Adorama Events is a new channel. It's everything beamed out here, including this guy. I'll get Troop in here one day. You know I'm going to mess this place up as well. So don't worry about it. Just hit subscribe. Hit like. He needs to feed his new family with these lights, I love this guy. I love this guy. And don't He's forget, my favorite. <laughs> and don't forget to drop a comment if you're watching live. I want to thank everybody for coming out. And I'm going to cut this live stream. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.